Hello, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. I am so glad that you did. Um, I hope you're all doing well. It is Saturday. I hope you're all crafting or um, just enjoying your summer day. <clears throat> I am. Um, I started to do an outside video again this morning on my tea dyeing and my lace dyeing process. However, I live in Florida. Don't blink when you live in Florida when the weather, uh, regarding any type of weather, because um, it changes very quickly. So, um, yeah, it got a little wet, even though the sun was out. I had no idea where it was coming from. I looked up. I mean, there were a few clouds, but <laughs> nothing, you know, earth shattering. There was no thunder. But um, it was a nice little shower, and my plants needed it, so... My paper didn't, but my plants did. So, um, yeah, no harm, no foul. So, um, today I am going to, I did, I was able to finish my process because the sun came back out, but I wasn't going to video it because it's basically the same process. Well, one of the same processes. I did tea stain my paper. I was going to lace dye it, um, once it was dry because I had dried a lot prior to even starting the video. So I was going to show you my process of tea dyeing and lace dyeing, but the process of tea dyeing is exactly the same. If you go back one video, you'll see my vegetable dyeing. Um, the only difference is, is in my tea dyeing, I only add a little bit of alum, a teaspoon. So um, I use um, black tea, which is right here, and it's by Lipton, but you can get any black tea you want to get the results I'm going to show you. And um, I typically will use about the tea bags or like the small ones, you know, for one cup of tea. I will typically make about six cups of tea um, with hot water and I will let that steep for about uh, maybe a half an hour. And um, then I add um, a half, I'm sorry, a half a teaspoon of alum. That just sets the color. That's all it does. It doesn't really, it, it makes it a little bit richer. It depends on how light or dark, and I'll show you that in a minute, you want your paper. And that is, all that is, is how long you keep it in the water. You know, you know if you dip it in, take it out, dip it into the other side, take it out and lay it flat, um, you're going to get basically a lighter color. If you put your paper in the bath and just layer it into the bath in, in a roasting pan and leave it for about five minutes and then just take each page, you know, each page out, it come out very simply. If you use a roasting pan, each page will come out very simply and lay it on your table. Um, to dry in the sun if you're going to dry it in the sun otherwise baking pan in the oven um, or parchment paper. I don't know how they do it in the oven because I don't do it in the oven so <laughs> um, sorry I can't give you any advice on that um, but outdoors I you know put it in take it out the one thing I did not tell you yesterday is I use copy paper regular copy paper you know, household copy paper that you would typically just use, you know, to print, um, say, your weekly schedule or whatever you use copy paper for. So you want to use a very inexpensive copy paper that you can get pretty much anywhere, even the grocery store, okay? So just regular old copy paper. If you use a heavier weight paper, which I will show you in a minute, um, say like I use a hammer mill, um, paper for my copy, you know, for my, when I do my printing, this is what I use. I use hammer mill premium copy, color copy. It's 28 pound. It's, um, let's see, 105 GSM. And it is, um, the premium color paper. It's got a color lock in it. This paper has um, a very nice sheen to it. So when you print on it, and it's got a color locking system. So when you print on it, 
you pretty much have to wait, you know, a, a few minutes for your papers to dry. Um, and you will get a nice, rich, beautiful print if you use this. It's inexpensive, um, I have found. I've used a lot of papers in four years. Um, and so far, my go-to is the Hammer Mill Premium Color Copy. You can use any weight. I've used the 27, and I've used the 28, and I've used the 30. For me, the 30 pound is just a little bit too heavy. So I've gone to the 28, and I love it. So 27, 28 is my go-to. This happens to be the 28. I buy it by the case. I believe it comes with four reams of 500 sheets in a case for like $33. So if you um, dye your paper with this, it's going to take forever for the color to absorb into the paper. And you're going to get a very heavy paper because once you dye your paper, it gets, the fibers get a little bit closer um, together and it causes the paper to get a little bit um, heavier or, you know, more, a little bit stiffer than, you know, uh, your paper. So this, I'll show you what happens when you use this. And like I said, it does have a beautiful sheen to it, but it just takes forever for it to dry, uh, dye. It takes forever to dry as well. If you're not drying it in the oven, I don't know about the oven, but outside, yes. So I don't use good copy paper to, tie, to, to dye my paper, regardless of what I'm using to dye it with, okay? So that takes care of that. Another good thing, um, that's what I forgot to mention yesterday was that part, okay? So use regular copy paper. So let me show you what we've come up with. I've left this here because there is a glare coming through the side of my blinds that is driving me crazy. See, it's right there now. <laughs> Every time I move it, it goes a different way. So I'm just gonna leave it alone. We'll put some paper down or something and cover this part up in a minute. Um, so, okay, let's start with the beetroot. Okay, so here's my beetroot. And as you can see, some of it I left in longer to get a deeper, darker shade. So this is pretty much a pinky mauve color. And same, you know, with this. So it really depends on how dark or how light you want your paper. This has all been dried outside and not pressed. It's been pressed, but not ironed. What I do to press my paper is I divide it into equal amounts of sheets, right? I put it, I have a piece of plexiglass on my desk and then it's, um, this is just a decoupage rice paper. So, um, and it comes off so I can change it anytime. But, um, so what I do is I put it under the plexiglass and then I take a ream of paper and I put it on top and then just leave it overnight. And that presses it pretty, you know, pretty flat. And I like that look. But there's, you know, for, for some papers, you will have to iron, and I'll show you why in a moment. So here is the result of your beetroot paper. Now, some of it you'll see is a little bit lighter in shade, but I wanted it lighter. So I didn't leave it in as long. But this is all, you know, this is what I didn't leave in too long. Sorry. This is the difference, okay? I don't know if that shows up in the camera, but this is a lot lighter than this, all right? See, it's a lot light. So it depends on, you know, how long you leave your paper in. It depends on um, the strength of the sun, for sure. So you have to watch it. I mean, it's a process. For me, it's a process. But I did 100 sheets yesterday, so I'm all set. I don't need to do any more uh, um, pink colored paper because the avocado pretty much turns out the same way. 
I just find that I get a lot better color, better uh, what I like as far as paper and what I use in the color pink, which you will get with avocados. I don't get any brown where with avocados, for some reason, I do get sort of a brown tint. But when I use beet juice, beet root, um, I have tried the can of beetroot juice and for some reason it doesn't take to the paper. I don't know why. It looks beautiful. I put it outside, even in the shade to dry. I bring it in. It's, it's almost white. So I do the same process, a little bit of vinegar, some alum, salt, doesn't, nothing. I've tried it with, without, I don't know what I do wrong, but simmering just the beets no skins i don't get any um i don't have to get anything out of the water because um the beets themselves don't they don't crumble they don't do anything so all i do is take the beets out with a slotted spoon and then i have beautiful beet juice to use okay now unfortunately you can't use it because i um, eat the beets because i put vinegar and salt in it Unless you want to make pickle beets, I suppose. That's a good idea. Because I do use vinegar and a little bit of salt when I make my pickle beets and the alum. Hmm. I just thought of that. Okay, well, moving on. So, that is with dyeing the paper with, you know, pink. Here's some lighter shades that I wanted. And again, you know, it just, it came out beautiful. I just haven't pressed this yet. It needs to be, you know, it needs to go under here and be pressed. So I have my lighter shades, which I just mixed up with my darker ones, and I don't want to do that. So I have my lighter shades. And then I have, I just pulled a, a stack out of my paper. But I have my lighter shades, and then I have, you know, my deeper, richer um, shades, okay? And they're beautiful, and I love them, and I'm really happy. So, all my pinks are ready. And I've done all my tea staining as well, and I'll show you that. So, here's my tea stained. Now, you get different colors same way. The only thing is with tea... I only add the alum and that is only because I like the richer color depending on what I'm going to use it for I do dye it some lighter you know I don't leave it in the bath as long so I get a lighter tea stain because there's some things that I want to print documents on there's some things that I don't want to print anything on I just want to use it in my journal oh, it's a lighter shade I haven't really gone through all of these yet, and I have some beside me flattening, so um, I'll show you those as well. Now, this is all regular household copy paper. Here's a lighter shade. I'll put that up there. Okay, so as you can see, these papers, same papers, but I just left them in a little bit longer. I mean, a little bit less time. You know, I put them in, took them out. And I have a really pretty lighter shade to be able to use. Now, when I go to do my lace on these, I do use coffee to do my lace. And I'll show you that in the next video. Okay? But I don't use a lot of coffee. It's a very, very little bit of coffee with hot water in a spray bottle. And then I do my lace to on tea paper okay because you need that darker color because obviously you've got dark you know you've got dark here if you went and sprayed it with tea then um then you wouldn't really get a pattern you wouldn't see it so you do have to use the copy and it's um if you want to go ahead and try it yourself it is um one teaspoon of coffee uh, the cheapest brand you can purchase um, to one cup of hot water 
and mix it well. And then you wanna put it in a spray bottle. And again, you wanna add a half a teaspoon of, of um, alum in a cup of water and then put it in your spray bottle and add just a little bit more hot water. Um, maybe about, oh, I don't know, a half a cup. And that will make it light enough, but dark enough to get your nice pattern and it looks gorgeous. And I'll show you that in the next video. Even if I have to do it indoors, we'll get it done. So that's the tea stained. So I also dyed some fabrics to show you those. Now this is cotton. So with the um, beetroot. Well, before I do the fabrics, let me show you what I do with my paper towels. I don't throw those away. Of course, I use them because I have to use paper towels because I make a mess, but I don't throw them away. This is what I do with them, okay? And I've done a couple of different things here. I'll show you. So, again, this is the same beetroot. There's no difference. It just depends on how you, this is not, that's paper. So if you want sort of a, um, this is tea. If you want sort of a um, handmade paper, use your paper towels, okay? So all I do, I this is not rinsed, okay? This is a paper towel that I use to clean up with and then I just laid it flat and let it dry. I didn't rinse it, okay? It's not rinsed. <laughs> All right, this is not rinsed. It's just left to dry, like so. And you know, I have no control over it. This is rinsed, okay? So you have a much lighter shade of pink, okay? I'm not a big fan, but I'll use it. But I wanted to show you. Rinsed, not rinsed. Can you see the difference? I mean, it's a lighter shade of pink, but it's, it's sort of a, um, well, you might love it. And I will use it, obviously, it's gorgeous. But I'm more of a fan of this um, because I love pink, obviously. <laughs> and I do this with blueberries black raspberries, cabbage, whatever I'm dying. I do the same thing. I save my paper towels and then I run them through my embossing machine and I have some gorgeous sort of like handmade, oops, handmade paper. You can print on this um, and use it for decoupage. So um, I haven't done that in for to show you, which I'm sorry, I wish I had. I'll do that. I'll print on it and show it to you in one of my videos. Um, I'll show you how to print on it. That's probably the easiest. I'll show you how to do that. Um, so in any event, this is gorgeous. It really comes out very pretty. There's one, this is one of my, this is my wallpaper die. Um, it's very old, very, very old, and it's by Stampin' Up, and I love it. This is my lace dye from Tim Holtz, and this was tea bags that I had been drying on the paper towel because I use my tea bags for several different things, okay? And all I do with my tea bags is once they're dry, I empty out the tea because I use it to fertilize my indoor plants. We'll get into that another time. Um, so I use what's in my tea bags and then I, I dump out the tea into a container and then the dry tea. And um, after it's, you know, I place it on paper towels and put it outside. So this has been placed on a paper towel. So that's why you have a lot of variation of color, okay? So then this is another one, just a, a pattern of a die I have, uh, not a die, uh, embossed folder. 
And then this is the rinsed, which is still pretty. It's very pretty. I love it. And of course I'll use it. But I love the richness of this depending on what you're gonna use it for. Okay, that's all. And again, I love this. Again, depending on what you're gonna use it for, I think it's gorgeous. Okay, so that takes care of that. And here's, you know, you can see that nice texture in it. It's so pretty. And then here's the tea dye. Not rinsed, just what I use to wipe up my table. And then I just laid it to dry. And you can see the difference. Let me show you. There's a difference. Let me check, turn off this light because it's showing much. Okay, there we go. See the difference? It's just, it's just really nice. Okay, so here is the white and here's the tea stained. Not rinse, just wipe up your table or whatever, you know, wipe it all up. And then when you're all done using your paper towel, cause I always fold it and use it to mop and then I'll, you know, fold it this way and use it to mop and then I'll, you know, depending and then, you know, I'll turn it and use it to mop. And this is just regular cheap, you know, we buy it at BJ's, so it's not expensive paper towel. And you can certainly do the same thing with this, but for some reason, when you dye your paper towel, you get a much nicer emboss. I don't know why. You just do. <laughs> I'm not an expert, like I told you. This is on paper, copy regular copy paper, okay, that's been dyed with the feet juice, okay, and that's it. So then I have some fabric because, of course, I wanted to show you. So this is how the fabric was, okay? I had these two squares of fabric as you can see I'm going to turn my light back on because I can't see sorry about that so here's your fabric like so and um this is a vintage fabric but what if you wanted to change the color of it and make it look a little bit more vintage so or change the color of it and make it you know have a pink tone to it or a blue tone to it or what have you um you can use plain uh, cotton, 100% cotton um, fabric, you know, um, sheets, pretty much vintage sheets are 100% cotton. There is no rayon and I mean synthetic fab. There's no, I find in vintage sheets, probably 50s, 60s, some 70s, you're going to get 100% cotton sheet. So if you can find white pillowcases, even if they're dingy, it doesn't matter um, because you're going to dye it. So, and if you want a blue dye, use either blackberries, um, cabbage, uh, red cabbage. If you put a little bit of baking soda in it, that will give you a blue color and it's really pretty. And um, let's see, grapes. G. Kerr um, has a fabulous video where she used uh, grapes from the vine. And we do have a winery in town. So I'm going to go and ask them to gift me some of their grapes they can't use. Because she got gorgeous, gorgeous, beautiful purples and lavenders. And when she added the baking soda, she got a gorgeous blue. So um, visit G. Kerr's channel. Um, it was, I want to say about a week ago when she did her video using her grapes. They were on her mother's spine and so she picked them and tried it and it worked. So I get the same results with blackberries um, and blueberries and red cabbage. So if you can't get your, whole, your hands on red, uh, on the on the grapes 
you know, on the vine, those kind of grapes, than, um, you know, wine grapes. Um, you can get the same effect with black raspberries, blueberries, and red cabbage, okay? So this is how the fabric looked. Vintage fabric, it's probably, I'd say, uh, well, I used it in a quilt several years ago, so I'm going to say probably 60s, maybe. It's 100% cotton. So here it is. Now I left it in too long. I wished I hadn't, but I did. I put it in. I, I put it in the alum. I put it in the bath. I took this piece, left this in the bath, took this piece, put it in the alum water, you know, got it wet, put it in the dye. And then I was like, oh, and I took it out and I rinsed it with my salt water, my cold salt water. And it was, it came out too pink. It's, it's almost a red. So, but you know, in pieces, I may be able to use it in some slow stitch, but it definitely did change the color quite obviously. Okay, not a fan, but just to show you, you've got to be quick if you're going to use 100% cotton with beet juice because otherwise you're going to get a really deep pink. Okay, it's it's not red. For sure, it's not red, but um, it did take the color really fast. This is the tea with the alum. Now, all I did, same thing, I put it in my tea bath, and as you can see, there's a difference in color, and I love it. I love this color. I love them both, but I love this. And this has been rinsed. Um, so I left it in the tea bath. I'd say, uh, well, I left it, I put it in, you know, submerged. Same thing with this piece. I submerged both pieces. I took them out. I rinsed them. Nah, they still weren't really dark enough. So I put them back in because what I did was I kept mashing it up with this one. Okay. So um, it still wasn't dark enough for me. So I put it back in and I left it about three minutes. Okay, I set my timer on my watch for four minutes, but it got to three minutes and I thought, mm, that should be enough. I took it out, I rinsed it in my salt water, and um, that's what I got when it dried. It has been pressed, okay? And it's just, it still feels beautiful and it's lovely. I love it. So that's what you get when you use tea. So if you have new fabric that's not very vintage, um, this is what you could get and you, nobody would know. I mean, you wouldn't know. Okay. So that's what you get if you do any kind of anything with fabric. And there's so many uses with fabric in your journals. From, in my opinion, I love mixing textiles with fabrics. I mean, with paper. I just think it looks good. So this, I don't know. I might use pieces of it. I, I just don't, I don't know. So we'll see. It depends on what I'm creating. So then I did some of my um, seam binding. Now, with this piece, I left it in not even a minute. And I got this really pretty pastel seam binding. And this is my seam binding. I get this from Amazon. And it's um, sort of an off-white color. If you want to hold on one second, I'll grab it to show you. It's by um, Hug Snug. It's washable, obviously. It's rayon. And um, you get 100 yards. And I always buy the white because I dye my own with everything. So, um, yeah. So I get, you know, any pastel colors or deep colors that I want to get. So I always just buy, you know, the color, the one color. 
um, you can buy it in several, several colors, okay? And you can crinkle it, no problem. This was just laid flat to dry. Um, but you can crinkle it simply by taking it and you just, you know, do this, fold it back and forth, back and forth like this, okay? And then once you've got it, I, I don't do mine all at once because sometimes I'll only use, you know, a little bit of the crinkle. So I'll take it like this. I'll twist it like this, right? Then I'll dip it in some water. And then I just take a paper clip and let it dry. It doesn't take long at all. So I'll take a clip like so and I'll let it dry. And this I'll just leave, you know, I'll just snip off. And then as you can see, it doesn't really take very long to crinkle because I hadn't even wet it yet. You want it flat, just do that. Okay, so that's the light pink, but I wanted obviously a darker pink as well. So I left it in a little bit longer till I got the color I wanted. So there's a piece of the darker. Okay, so there's the darker pink. There's a more pastel pink. And then I like to variegate mine. So anytime I'm dying, what I do is I'll take it and do this, okay? Then I twist it. Then I'll twist it maybe twice. And then I do it again, back and forth. And back and forth and twist it. And then back and forth and back and forth and twist it. And then I take a tiny, tiny little elastic. They sell them everywhere. They're just teeny, tiny, little round elastics. I do not have one on my desk. And then I drop it in, leave it for about, I don't know, two minutes, maybe a minute, about a minute. And then I pull it out. I take the little rubber band off and then I have kind of a tie dye if you will, but it's like a variegated. So I, it's not all white and it's not all pink. It's, it's just a variegated. And what sometimes what I'll do is if I have a couple of dyes, I will do a little bit here, okay? So I'll do it a little bit here like this and I'll, I'll dip this, okay? Then say I want to use like a tea color, which comes out sort of like a linen. Then I take it and this, I leave a little bit of an edge. I take it like this and do the same thing and fold it back and forth. And then I just dip this part into the tea. So when I open it up, I've got you know, a little bit of pink and say some, a little bit of the tea and a little bit of blue and a little bit more tea and a little bit more pink and, you know, depending. I think I might have a piece right here because I was gonna use it in a journal. Hold on. One second, if it's here, it's here. If it's not, it's not, it's not a big deal. I don't have it right here, so I can't show it to you. It's, it's in with my journal things, so. But anyway, um, it does take time, but it, it, it depends on the look you're going for. If you want a yellow, turmeric is so easy. Don't use a lot and put it in and out. If you want a pale color, if you want a deeper yellow, leave it in longer, okay? This takes a second to dry, okay? So there you have a light pink, a more darker pink, and then a variegated. That is your seam binding, that is your cotton. Here is some synthetic. This is not the kind of cheesecloth you get at 
the um, uh, grocery store, okay? This is synthetic. You get this, actually, this I got in a wedding section at um, a craft store, okay? I don't remember which one I've had it for years because it was a tablecloth that they would use, say, at like an outdoor wedding, okay? And it is huge. It is, I forget how many yards you get, but I've had it for a couple of years. And it's white, so I dye it several different colors. This is the what I get when I use the beet juice. And all I do is I take the piece like this, and I put it in my bath just like this. It goes into my beetroot juice bath like this, okay? Just like this. Then I take it, I make sure it's all coated nice. It's the desired color I want because I can see it turning the color in the bath and so will you, okay? I don't squeeze it. I don't do anything. I just, you know, do this and get it nice and wet. So remember, it's already been in the alum, alum water. So you put it in the alum water first. It's wet. And then you put it into your vegetable dye. And you just, you know, kind of swish it around. And once it's all nice and, you know, soaked the color that you want, you simply lot you could lay it over something to dry I have a drying rack so I just lay it on my drying rack soaking wet I don't squeeze it I don't squeeze out the juice the water I don't do anything I just lay it to dry okay and I get this gorgeous gorgeous pale pink um uh cheesecloth but it's synthetic cheesecloth. It is not the kind you buy at the grocery store. But you get the same results. You just have to be very quick because it has no synthetic fibers. Cheesecloth is 100%. Uh, I don't know what it is, really. It's I think it's cotton, um, to be honest with you. I don't have any left, so I had to use the synthetic to dye it. Um, but when you do use cheesecloth, regular cheesecloth, you have to be very quick or it's going to get really dark really fast. With the synthetic, it, you know, it takes pretty well pretty fast. Um, but, you know, and just don't squeeze it out. You don't need to. All right. So, and it's beautiful. And oh, by the way, nothing smells like vinegar. In case you're wondering, you're not using that much. You're only using a teaspoon of the vinegar, a teaspoon of the salt, and about a teaspoon and a half of the alum. That's it. Okay. So there's there's no vinegar smell to anything, not the paper or anything. Actually, this smells really nice. It smells fresh, like it's been out, you know, like a sheet out in the sun. Same thing with the paper. There's no smell. I also dyed some wool. This is um, a wool blend because it's very difficult to find 100% wool. And if you do, it's going to be very expensive. I don't know if I have a white piece here. Well, to show you. Well, I do, but I'm not going to get it. Anyway, this is wool blend. I don't know what it's blended with. <laughs> it's a 90% wool or 80% wool and or 90% wool and something else. So it did shrink, obviously it's wool. But I didn't put it in the dryer or anything, so I didn't get a lot of shrinkage, but it's gorgeous. So if you wanted to use it for anything, um, I use it for um, my um, needle books that I make. I use it for slow stitching appliques. I will make appliques out of it. I'll cut hearts, I'll cut, depending on the applique I want, you know, whatever I want, I will, you know, trace around it. Sometimes I'll use a die and I'll trace around it with a pen that you can use for sewing that disappears when you wet it. And um, 
then I just, you know, I cut it out and I use it on my, you know, as an applique. So anyway, that's wool. I had it and I thought, ooh, I could really use some more pink. I don't have any. I do have it in peach. I have it in pink. The peach, I got that color using turmeric. It came out a very, very peachy color, which is very, very pretty. Okay, but we're not discussing that right now. All right, let me show you what I did here. This is printed on the pink paper. It's just a document, okay? I did print on the other side. So you got two sides. The only problem is I printed it wrong. So it's upside down on the other side, <laughs> but that's okay. I just wanted to show you on the pink paper if you printed a document, okay? This is on the tea stain. It's pretty, right? Now, if you're going to print on paper, on tea or coffee stain paper, just make sure you press it really good, okay? And it only takes a minute to press it but you definitely wanna make sure your edges are pressed. That's your most important part. I press the whole thing. And all I use is my handy dandy little iron, which I cannot live without. I don't know how I went so long without a craft iron, but you could use a regular iron as well. I just don't like to leave my craft room. So this is on the pink and this is on the tea stain. Okay, and you could get a much lighter by using a lighter shade. I just didn't have the lighter shade available. So I used the darker one. Here you can see the difference. This is on regular copy paper. This is on the tea stain. And this is on the pink. So depending on what you want to use it for in your journal, those are the colors that you get. One more item and then I'll let you go. And then I'm going to be putting up another video right after this one so you can see some other things because this one's gone on a little bit longer. This is on graph paper, okay? Just regular graph paper. I'm sorry, this is tea stain, you know, just copy paper, more copy paper, copy paper. And as you can see, you get whatever color you want. This is graph paper. You might be able to see the graph lines better in this piece, but it's really nice. And I love printing on this paper. It comes out gorgeous, okay? And I leave the holes. I just think it looks really cool. But then you have a nice, I mean, sometimes the lines will come out, but printing documents on this comes out gorgeous. And I don't mind that some of it's not all dyed. I like that look. So I do try a lot of times to get it so that the whole thing isn't completely, you know, you can see that there's some white. And I do the same thing with my staining of my pink papers as well, or my blue papers or whatever I'm dyeing. You know, sometimes I like it better. That's just regular copy paper. Okay, so that is, I didn't want to pull it all out and all of it's not dry yet anyway. I literally had to pull everything in It's on a table. My, thank God my husband hadn't left for work yet. He picked up the whole table with me and we just moved it right inside. And I have tile on my floor in my living room right by the door. Well, the whole floor is tile, but um, this car, uh, a beautiful rug, but not by the door. So poor dog was like, what's going on? Because her bed is there and I didn't move her bed. She was in it and oh my goodness, <laughs> it was great. So that's it for today. Well, for now, well, for today, I'll be putting up another video after this one. And I hope that you enjoyed that video. I hope that I've gone over everything. Remember, very, very important. Here's another tea stain, a lighter tea stained. Um, embossed. Oops. There's the difference. Okay. So that's a lighter sea stained. Oh, if you wanted to stamp on it, 
I press it first and then I stamp on it. This is the paper towel. It comes out great and it feels good and it looks great in your journal. Um, you could tear it, you know, you could do whatever you wanted. It's hard to tear because, you know, it's, it's like fabric almost, you know, but just kind of tear around it or, you know, your tag or what have you. And it just looks so good in your journal. Any, you know, any, any tag, any kind of stamp or what have you or even florals, you know, print them black and white and cut them out. But isn't that beautiful? Now that would look really nice decoupaged on something. You know, cut around it and then decoupage it onto, you know, something. Um, so I just did a few stamps just to kind of, you know, show you the different um, effects you get when you stamp on the paper towel. For the paper towel, when you stamp it, I do have to press it. Otherwise, the stamp just doesn't come out right. So you can stamp on paper towel that's tea dyed. Looks really cool. And like you can see, the fibers are kind of cool. Kind of looks like fabric, you know. Now, if you're going to decoupage it, I'm thinking you'll probably have to separate it like you would a napkin. Yeah. You'd have to separate it. And um, where are we? 46. Let's just see what it looks like. If you, you know, people can either fast forward through it or not. But let me get a piece of paper here and decoupage this on. And let's see what it looks like. Let's see here. I have a scrap of paper here. And I'm going to decoupage this down. I'm going to cut around it first rather than tear it. Where are my scissors? I had them right in my little container. I'll just use these for now. I'll use these. Where are my scissors? Use these. Let me just cut around this and decoupage it and see what it looks like. And like I said, you know, you don't have to stay for this part. I just thought, why not? Let's do it. I've never done it before. I've never decoupaged with this before. I've used it in my journals, but I've never decoupaged it. So let's try it. I bet it's going to look really nice. This is a stamp that's, um, you get this little like specimen tube and I just put a little flower inside of it. So you, it's a blank, you know, specimen tube. And then same thing with the bottles. They're um, just the bottle, and then I just put the flower how I want it to come out. So, and that was a gift, so I don't know where you'd get it. Um, let's use my glue, which is right here. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on this. I can wipe this off after. I don't know if I should be putting this on this. I don't know how many plies this has. It might have more than one. I mean, more than two. Does anybody know about paper towels and how many plies there are? Seemingly only two. Yeah, there's only two. And my cheap paper towel. I'm sure if you bought a heavier paper towel like a Scotch brand or, you know, an expensive brand paper towel, you'd get a nice thick um, piece, you know, almost like a fabric. And that would um, emboss really nice. And um, I'll have to ask my friend Celeste about die cutting. I don't know if she's ever die cut paper towel or napkin. I'm pretty sure she has die cut decoupage napkin. I have to go back and look at her videos. But her name is Celeste and she's from Woodland Inspired. And I highly, highly suggest that you visit her channel. She's amazing. Amazing. I hate missing her videos. So I'm not going to go straight on this. I'm just going to decoupage it and see what it looks like. And I love it. 
Wow, I love it. That looks fabulous. There we go. What a great idea. So look at that. It's a tea stained towel that's been pressed. And I mean, you need paper towels so to do it. So why not? I mean, I should have dyed some paper towel on purpose. So then, I mean, I, I don't know why I just cut that. I have no idea why I just cut that. I have no idea. <laughs> why did I do that? Anyway, can you see that? That looks so cool. I don't know why I cut that. <laughs> I, I don't know. I was just like, oh, what can I do with it? Okay, so, and I would probably, I don't know, I, I might take, you know, put some uh, matte medium over that. I don't know, because I've never done it before, but it looks so cool. You could even take, and, you know, a little, um, before you decoupage it, you could take a colored pencil or what have you, and color in the flowers if you wanted to, or what have you. I don't know. With me, the sky's always the limit. <laughs> All right, everybody, I'm trying to get to your comments. You might get an inbox full of comments in one day and you might not get any. It depends on how I'm doing and what I'm trying to do and what have you. I do have some new ideas for my channel, which I will be coming up with and letting you know about in a very short while, okay? So until next time, be well. Be safe, be kind, and definitely I wish you all a happy, 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 happy weekend with dyeing papers or fabrics or laces or whatever your little heart desires. Um, where else did I die? I don't know. Paper towels. More paper towels. Embossing paper towels, pink papers, tea stain papers, graph papers. You name the paper, it's dyed. I've got lots of dyed papers. It's, um... Okay, <laughs> so that's what we did today. I hope that you all stay well. God bless y'all. Love you. Bye-bye.